Are you working on establishing your Azure naming convention? Well, the Azure naming tool can help you do just that. Learn how to install the Azure naming tool on this MS Cloud Bros video. Hey, Jeremy Wallace here, Microsoft MVP, Certified Trainer and Solutions Architect for Azure. And today we're gonna to take a look at the Azure Naming Tool, which can really help you establish and adhere to an Azure Naming Convention as you build out your Azure environment. So before we dive in, why don't you take a moment to like this video, subscribe to this channel, and ring that notification bell so you can stay up to date on all the latest MS Cloud Bros videos. All right, now let's dive in. All right, so first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is head over to GitHub where the Azure naming tool is. You can go to github.com forward slash MSPNP forward slash Azure naming tool. Uh, and that should bring you right to the root of this page. You can of course uh, select this Azure naming tool name just to make sure you're on that root page. And then you're gonna to wanna to make a fork of this. What forking does inside GitHub is make a local copy of that GitHub project for you that you can then manipulate. And then we're gonna use that to deploy the actual Azure naming tool. So go ahead and sign in with your GitHub account if you're already signed in. All right, so now I'm signed in. I'm gonna hit that fork button again. And it's gonna lead me through creating a new fork. I'm gonna just leave that as the repository name there. I'm gonna hit create fork. All right, now you can see that it's under my account now in GitHub. It's forked from the original source there. All right, so from here, we're gonna go ahead into this .github directory workflows, and there's this deploy Azure naming tool to Azure Web Apps .net core. We're gonna select that. All right, and you can see here that this workflow assumes that you've already set up the Azure App Service Web App and then also that you are creating a secret in your repository. So we're gonna head over to the Azure portal to now do that piece. All right, so I'm in the Azure portal and we're gonna to go to app services and we're gonna create a new web app. I'm gonna stick this in a new resource group, RG dash, Azure naming tool three, and of course name this appropriately to your environment and then for name, I'm just gonna use SML1 because this is my lab, Safari Micro Lab 1, and then AZ naming tool. And we're gonna go for publish, we want code. And then for runtime stack, we wanna use .NET 8. Operating system, I'm gonna go with Linux on this region. We're gonna deploy to SDUS 3 for me, because that's the, the Azure region I'm using. Of course, use your own appropriate Azure region. And then for Linux plan down here, we're good with that. Icing plan. I'm gonna start with a basic SKU, and then this can always be moved up later. The rest of these, we're just gonna go with the defaults on. All right, let's review and create. All right, now deployment is in progress. We'll wait for that to fully deploy. All right, my resource is deployed, so I'm gonna go ahead and go to resource. Once the web app is fully loaded, we're gonna go up into the top bar here and you'll see this download publish profile. We want that. If it gives you an error that authentication is not enabled, you may need to go into configuration and then there is a setting to turn on the basic auth publishing credentials. And you can turn those on there and hit save. You can come back in here and you want to download that published profile. All right, now that's downloaded, we're going to head to the authentication lane. We're going to add an identity provider. We want to select Microsoft. All right, I'm going to leave this named. That's my one easy naming tool. And then I'm going to go with the defaults for everything else. The secret explanation, I'm just going to go with the recommended 180 days. And then I'm going to hit add. All right, now I'm gonna head over to my GitHub repository. I'm gonna to go to settings up here in the upper right-hand corner. And on the left-hand side, I wanna select secrets and variables, then actions. All right here, I wanna select new repository secret. For the name, we're gonna put this value, Azure Web App Published Profile. Uh, this was specifically called out in that workflow that we saw earlier. And then for uh, the body here, uh, we're gonna put the published profile data that I had downloaded earlier that and 
and select add secret. All right, and then we're gonna click new repository secret once again. This time we're gonna put Azure web app name as the value. Again, also called out in that workflow. And then we wanna enter the name of the Azure web app as the value. That's what I wanna put as the value here. Now I wanna to go to actions. I understand my workflows, go ahead and enable them. Then on the left-hand side here, I wanna select this Azure naming tool, build and deploy to an Azure web app. We're going to run workflow. See it go now in progress. I want it to complete successfully. All right, once it's successfully deployed, now we can go take a look at on the Azure side. If we head over to the Azure portal, we can grab that default domain URL. And if we open up a new tab here, and go to it. And if you find that it doesn't load, go back into the web app and go down to configuration settings and on startup command you're going to want to add dot net azure naming tool dot dll save go back to the site all right i'm going to accept and here i'm going to want to set the password this is the, the administrative password for the azure naming tool so go ahead and enter an appropriate password save so now you should have access to the azure naming tool and we'll cover the usage of the naming tool in a separate video, uh, but that's how to install it in an Azure web app and get into it so you can start using it to establish your naming convention uh, and adhere to that naming convention as you build out your Azure environment.